What's up, everybody? This is Ingram, and we are back with a tutorial on smelters, which smelteries, which are part of the Tinker's Construct mod. As promised, we're going to go through a bunch of different setups. I got one behind me here that you can kind of see. Um, kind of crazy looking. We're going to go through exactly what's going on, all the different setups, what to do, how to build it, how to customize it, what to put in it, what to get out of it, a whole bunch of different stuff. So stick around. Here's a little bit of a quick look at a bunch of the different things we're going to go through today in the tutorial. Probably the best place to start for an explanation on how to build a smeltery, what to do with it, and all that jazz is to actually start with the very basic building block, which is a piece of grout. Um, and that you're going to use this to make all the rest of the things, not all, everything, but everything for the smeltery. It's going to be very important. You're going to need a ton of it. Um, and unfortunately, it uses clay and gravel and sand. Uh, there's two different recipes. If you're into that sort of thing, there's clay with just a regular lump of clay, a piece of gravel, and some sand. And you can also do the exact same recipe except using a block of clay and that pattern up there. Uh, there is no advantage to either one. Um, you know, you don't get, like, more grout if you use one recipe or the other. You either get two grout or eight grout, um, and that is that. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to slap that grout into a furnace and throw some charcoal, coal, whatever. You can smelt this, anything. Just melt it like normal. Um, and when you put grout in there, you're going to get these things called seared bricks. Seared brick is actually going to be used in all of the remainder of these components um, in various different ways. The very first thing you're going to want to build um, is probably the seared brick itself. If we take a look at that recipe really quickly, you can see that it's just a, a four by pattern of seared brick. Now, that is going to form the base, which we'll get into in just a second, of your smeltery. You're going to also need to round everything out, a seared tank, which is actually going to hold lava. Um, and is actually just, you can see here, a piece of glass surrounded by that same seared brick. And finally, the smeltery controller, which is like the computer for your smeltery, which is just uh, eight seared brick in a circle, like so. Seared glass, we'll see in a minute, and seared windows as well. Seared glass actually acts like a tank. Um, unfortunately, it does not dump into the seared tank, which we just saw over there. It doesn't do that automatically. It's basically a storage tank that's also see-through. And the seared window um, is just actually, let's take a look here. You can see that pattern there. And the seared window, of course, is actually just a window that doesn't do anything other than letting you see inside your smeltery, which if you see that big guy down the end there, it's it's actually kind of useful. It lets you know what the deuce is going on without having to open the smeltery controller. The smeltery itself is constructed mainly and primarily using these things called seared bricks. Now, to start the smeltery base, you're just going to actually put a 3x3x1. Three by three by this is only one block deep. You can see that here. It's a 3x3x1 three by three by pad. The next layer, and you don't need to put the corners, please notice that, the next layer is actually going to be more seared brick in a pattern that looks something like this. Now you'll notice that these two spots are going to be left open. We're going to put our smeltery controller right here and our seared tank right here. You don't need to put them there, but we're going to do that for a specific reason, which we'll get into uh, as we go through the tutorial. Okay, so let's actually complete this smeltery uh, base. I just put the smeltery controller right here. And this is the exact same as the previous setup, just with the smeltery controller. Now, one thing to notice is that this controller is actually um, empty. It's not doing anything. It's just like a blank thing right here. Once we put the last piece, which can be the seared tank or if you have another brick that's missing over here, as soon as you actually complete and produce a valid multi-block smeltery, you'll notice that the smeltery controller is going to start doing this little flame effect uh, there's no lava or anything in this yet. It just does that to tell you that the smeltery is actually valid and is on. Getting things out of the smeltery is done using this thing called a smeltery drain. Now these are, again, easy to make and, again, use seared brick. Um, this is actually a smeltery drain right here. You can see this back side. This is the back, and then this little tiny hole is the front. What we're going to do is we're going to go and add a seared faucet onto that which will allow us to click, I'm sorry, I keep, there's your recipe for that. You just grab it and plop it right on, shift click to deploy it like so, shift click, lets you place it. 
Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put something underneath that seared faucet. An example here of a casting basin has prov been provided. Um, and the casting basin, again, is just here. And if you take this and invert this recipe, you get the thing called the casting table. But we'll take a look at those. You can actually also use liquiducts to pull things out of smeltery drains. And again, we're going to see um, some more extensive examples of that coming just around the corner. What we're looking at here is actually a completed smeltery that's multiple levels high. I don't know if there's an upper limit to this thing. That's a pretty tall one. Um, I've made some obscenely tall ones and have never had a problem. What each level lets you do is add nine more things into the smeltery controller to get smelted at the exact same time. Um, what I've done here is I've hooked up, again, remember I said there was a reason we put the smeltery controller on this side and also the uh, seared tank on this side. Uh, the reason for that is if we put the smeltery controller where we can access it from the side, we can actually put things using any chest and a hopper. We can build an automatic feeding system. So let me put some ore berries, some tin ore, and some gravel ore. You can mix these all together. Um, the hopper is automatically going to pull them out and stick them right into the uh, smeltery controller. I used ore berries because they don't require a lot of heat to melt, and we get some immediate results. We can see that it's being added there right now. And again, remember, we're using the hopper, so this like whole setup is, is pretty automated. It's kind of nice. Um, the higher you go, remember, it allows you to add more and more things. And the seared tank right here is actually storing the lava that this smeltery is using to melt things. Now, there is a little bit of a glitch. You can see it just kind of bumped in there. Um, it tells me that I have uh, 2,800 millibuckets left of lava. And that will go down as each of these gets melted. And that melting, you can kind of see it down there, those three little layers down there. Um, a little bit difficult to see, but you can see them down the bottom. shows you what is actually melted uh, in the background. One awesome thing to note is that ores are processed at a 1 to 2 ratio, and every one ore will yield the equivalent of 2 ingots. So it's like having a built-in smeltery. Oh, we can see our tin is coming in there. Um, each one of these tin things will get melted down into the equivalent of 2 ingots. So it's like having a pulverizer or a macerator built right into your furnace. It's, it's actually very cool. Now we can get things out of this smeltery as mentioned in a couple different ways. Here's a bunch of drains um, and drains remember let you go in or out of the system which is very important. Here's a drain hooked up to a casting table with a, um, an ingot pattern in the casting table. Now patterns are made using um, aluminum brass which we'll discuss a little bit more over there and it's just a little cast. There's a whole bunch of different types. You just put it right in there by clicking and then use the seared faucet to pour into the casting table. And I just made an alumite ingot, which is actually an alloy um, usable by the uh, smeltery. The other way we have over here is this casting basin. And I'm going to actually screw this up because I want to show you why I have this liquiduct here. Now, I think I only have one Let's see, I should only have one. Oh no, I have, I have quite a bit of whatever's coming through here, but not enough. Do you see that? Uh, a casting basin takes nine ingots worth of whatever liquid metal you're trying to deal with. Now, I don't have enough here, so what I've done is I've hooked this liquiduct back to another drain. Oops, sorry. If we take a look at that back there. And by turning the liquiduct on, I can actually pump things out of either of these casting tables and back into the smeltery, which is going to be helpful because the only other way to get this out uh, get that partially filled casting basin fixed is to actually destroy the casting basin which nobody wants to do. So if I do that again now I'm having iron come through here and we will be able to see I definitely do I not have enough iron on the bottom? Wow oh, I don't. Let's do that again. Pump that crap out of there. Yada 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 and now let's put some tin. We should be able to make a nice tin block these things take roughly five seconds if you're going to do a timer. I believe it's five or six seconds. And we'll show you how to set that timer up to do this automatically, as well as using hoppers to automatically retrieve this. So here we go. Here's a block of tin. And we are all set. It's pretty legit. This Big Daddy rig right here is actually a more elaborate setup of a smeltery um, that has some neat things regarding remote liquid storage, uh, remote molten 
liquid storage, which is which is kind of cool. So again, we have our standard set up here with our hopper pumping into our smeltery controller. Um, the seared tank is getting automatically fed by our ender tank, which is going to be hooked up probably in the nether uh, to an ender pump. Um, there's uh, I forget what it's actually called, but there's a pump, an endothermic pump. That's what it's called. That actually works very well in the nether. Um, and does its own chunk loading and everything, so it's, it's actually very cool. It's a great way to get uh, lava out of the nether, and I think the endothermic pump actually tries to replace things with gravel. I could be misspeaking there, but um, that's going to let you get a constant supply of lava to your uh, seared tank. Um, what I have hooked up back here before we get into the next piece uh, are two smeltery drains with liquiduct. One of them is outbound, this guy right here outbound and the other one is inbound and outbound and inbound are relative to that stack of things over there which we'll move to in just a second uh, remember that any outbound um, things are going to actually require a lever in order to turn them on to pump stuff in but remember drains go in and out so we can actually take liquids out of this from this side and using that thing pump them back in on this to explain a little bit of what the deuce is going on over here, um, here's our inbound from the smeltery. And again, I just color these are ender tanks that I just color differently. Red is um, inbound from the smeltery, and green is outbound to the smeltery. Um, but what we're going to do is, if we take a look here, we have coming out of the top of our tank, and you do not have to do this on other tanks. I just did because I I don't like to have wires running everywhere. Um, we're going to come out of the top of our tank and into these things which are liquid routers. Now these are technically added by Mine Factory Reloaded, but if you're doing it in a mod pack, um, you probably already have Mine Factory Reloaded. You can get these things called molten buckets of whatever material you're doing by putting a bucket into your casting table. Remember that we said that the casting table can accept a bunch of different things? Well, one of them is actually a bucket. And if you put the bucket in there and then pour something around it, it will, quite nicely, once it's done taking for freaking ever, create, oh dear, it went a little overboard. But here you go, here's a molten bucket of gold, and that's going to be very important uh, for setting this whole rig up. What I've done is I've actually created rigs for iron, gold, and steel, and I'll show you how to make a really cheap way to make steel in just a second and I just put molten buckets of each of those metals in the top here. Now, the reason for doing that is because when I turn the drain on, you can see it's going to drain all of that stuff out of there. It's going to come into the top and it's automatically going to route it into the right set of tanks. Now, as soon as the gold is gone from the smeltery, it'll automatically switch over. Now it's doing iron. It's going to fill iron up automatically. And if we wait in just a second to three, four, it'll switch to steel as well. And here comes our steel getting pumped right in there. And I use just blocks of iron, gold, and steel to show what is going on here. And I'll show you now, if we turn this off, uh, these are just lamps to indicate um, if the input or output is on. Let's turn inbound on. We can pretty much leave that on all the time uh, without any problem. Don't worry about that thing rotating. It's not going to impact what we're doing here. But now let's say that I am making an iron tool part using my casting bench and I need to get iron back into that but I don't want to wait for it to melt again. All I gotta do is you see I have these liquid ducts configured to pump stuff out when a redstone signal is applied so if we tap this button right here I'm trying to sneak around here tap that button it's gonna punch a bunch of iron out pump it into this uh, and this is gonna come up and then into our smeltery and if we take a look now we actually have 13 ingots worth, and um, sometimes you get like a little bit of odd. You know, a button might be too long. You can play around with that button press. Uh, but now we have 13 iron ingots. Okay, let's say we're done making our little uh, piece of tools. Actually, let's make one. Let's make something that uses, where's the plate? It uses eight. We're going to make an iron plate. We just go like this. It's going to pour all the iron into the iron plate cast. Let's put our ingot cast back in our chest here while we wait. And it is doing eight of them, so it's going to take a little bit of time. Um, what happened was it casted it. It 
cooled, the hopper pulled it out of the casting table and stuck it into our chest down here in the middle. And so we've made a large iron plate. Okay, we're done with that. So have five ingots left, and we're not going to use iron anymore, so we drain the system. They come into here and get stored for later use. Pretty freaking sweet. The process for actually making all of those different types of casts, like all these ones that you see here, is uh, pretty simple and is definitely crucial to know how to do. Step one involves the part builder. And what you're going to do is you're going to take all the patterns that you've made and you can actually just make stone versions of each of these. If we wanted to make, for example, uh, a large plate pattern, we'll just go ahead and use some cobblestone, our stencil for the large plate pattern, and that gives us uh, a stone large plate. I've already actually gone ahead and made hammerheads, a large plate, a tough binding, and a tool rod. And I'm going to demonstrate how to turn each of these into a casted version. Um, casted versions are essential, especially when you're doing stuff with a tool forge, uh, where you need to use metal, advanced metal pieces, like for example, the alumite needs to be uh, crafted using a smeltery, um, bronze, things like that. You can't make them in just the regular part builder. Step two takes us back to our giant smeltery rig where we've actually filled it with some aluminum brass. Now, 220 ingots is way more than you're going to actually need, but um, I just had a ton, so we're just going to put it right in there. We're going to go over the recipe for aluminum brass uh, farther down the line here, but for now, just know that you need to fill the smeltery with aluminum brass. Then all you do is you place the tool part that you're trying to make a cast for right into the casting table. So, for example, I have my stone hammerhead. Slap that in there um, and then tap the faucet and it'll pour the aluminum brass around the stone hammerhead. And now we can see we have a hammerhead cast. Uh, we actually get to keep the stone hammerhead. We get to keep the tool that we use to make the cast. Here's an example of the tough tool binding. Same thing. We're going to make a cast for that. It only uses one ingot at a time, I believe. And we get to grab that tool binding cast. Now, you'll notice in each of these casts, in case you don't know, um, see how it says a material cost? And material cost is eight for the hammerhead and three for the tool, the tough binding. What that means is that when we use this cast in the smeltery, if we were going to make I don't know that we can actually do this. So if there was iron in that thing um, and we were to pour an iron hammerhead into this casting table, it's going to require eight ingots in order to actually make the iron head uh, using this cast. Now, in the event that you have a ton of uh, stuff to process, you can actually automate this a little bit. And what I have here is a timer that is currently set to 16 seconds uh, for the casting basin because it's going to use, again, nine ingots worth um, and this will actually automate the process these seared faucets can be triggered by any redstone signal again this takes uh, 16 seconds to pour and then cool and that will automatically process your gold into blocks you can also do the same thing um, if you're gonna do some uh, ingots I, this is just on a five second timer which should be good enough to get us going quick 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 boom there we go and that will automate um, the removal of, you know, it'll automate whatever you're trying to do. If you're trying to make tons of blocks of gold and a bunch of ingots you're trying to burn through because you need for other recipes, um, you can use these uh, to accomplish that. It's pretty slick. That's a good way to automate. Um, you can tie them to different things that are slightly more clever, but, you know, your basic timer um, or a redstone clock or even a computer craft controlled timer, they will all work wonderfully. Now, I mentioned that there was a really cheap recipe for steel, and I didn't lie. And you do need the smeltery to actually utilize this recipe, but four pieces of coal surrounding one piece of iron, not even processed, just one iron ingot, actually gets you one steel dust. And steel dust, if we take a look at it, is uh, the equivalent of one ingot per steel dust. And you can just throw them into your smeltery and these guys will actually get smelted down quite nicely and it's an extremely extremely cheap way to make steel which makes really durable tools um, and some pretty high-end things if you have any other mods like Greg Tech or Railcraft or any of those things uh, they tend to make steel very difficult to get but this recipe you might think it's a little cheaty but it's intended to get you some pretty cheap steel uh, quite nice your mighty smelting book will give you um, insight as to a bunch of different of these different smeltery controllers, how to make all this stuff, but it also gives you uh, examples of how to make bronze, aluminum, brass, uh, manilin, alumite, a bunch of different things, um, including some of these more 
odd things called like brownstone, clear glass, and stone, which we'll take a look at in a second. Um, and those are going to be, this can be a useful reference. Now, the smeltery quite nicely acts as a alloy furnace. So we can melt three bars of copper with one bar of tin to get three bars of bronze. Or if we take a look at this recipe, we can do three aluminum, one copper gets us two aluminum brass, which are going to be used to create all of the cast for the casting table that we just took a look at over there. Two cobalt and two ardite get us one. It's kind of an expensive recipe of this um, manilin, menulin. I don't really know how to say that, but it's a very strong um, uh, ingot, which is used to make very strong, very durable, very high speed and high mining level tools. Last but not least, you can mix five aluminum, two iron, and it's technically two obsidian in the recipe that shows you, but it's one obsidian block gets you three alumite ingots, and alumite is a very good tool, um, or a very good ingot for making a bunch of really good tools, and it's going to let you, um, it's, it's quite a bit cheaper and more easy to come by than any of the other more advanced alloys, and it's also extremely strong, um, fast, and has a high mining level. Brownstone has the cool effect of letting you actually run faster. There's rough brownstone, there's a bunch of chiseled brownstone, a bunch of different things, um, but you actually need to make them with a the smelter. I have just a little bit of a tiny rig set up, which is going to demonstrate for us how to actually do this. It, it uses the equivalent of one tin nugget per gravel um, in a casting basin to make this stuff called brownstone. Now, if we apply a little bit of a redstone signal here, there's a piece of gravel in there, and we're going to apply a tiny bit of tin, and we'll see in a second. Uh, oh, I don't even But it's going to um, convert it to brownstone. Wait a second. There we go. It's going to come in here. Um, it's pretty cool. Brownstone is really good. Makes you run really fast, especially if you do the uh, the brownstone road version. Lets you run really, really fast. Is great, obviously, for roads um, and connecting large portions of your base together. This recipe is pretty legit because endstone is normally very difficult to get, and you need it for things like the soul shards in the, um, whatever that soul mod is that lets you make soul cages and all that stuff. Now, typically you have to go to the end to get endstone, but this recipe takes one ender pearl and one block of obsidian, put the block of obsidian in a casting basin, just like we did with the brownstone um, and the gravel in the casting basin, and then simply apply some molten ender. Now, you're obviously going to want to do this with your smeltery setup, but this is, again, just a little demo, and that will actually make endstone. Now, I don't know if this is a bug all the time, but for whatever reason, this thing is not storing anywhere near as much um, molten ender as I think it should be, and it's making a ton of endstone. It really, either this thing's glitchy or it uses virtually no ender pearl um, when you're when you're making this recipe. Um, but you can see here that there's something definitely not right there unless the recipe is really, really efficient. Last but not least is clear glass. This is an absolute pain to make. It takes so long. You have to melt one piece of glass down in your smeltery and then uh, pour it into a casting basin. And we can see that action going here. The liquid glass is in the casting basin. Then it cools and turns into clear glass. Clear glass is awesome because if you see here, um, it doesn't have any borders. It's like automatic connected textures even at the default texture set. That little demonstration by some order of divine province also brings us finally back into our last chamber here where we can see a demo of actually clear glass and stained glass uh, used to make a little picture in the wall up there at the top I have TMC carved up there doesn't look as good as the creeper head though but uh, this stained glass is really cool it comes in all 15 or 16 different colors and is made using clear glass surrounding um, each of the different colors that you're trying to make so that about sums it up for our smeltery tutorial if you look behind me you can see quite an elaborate setup using all of the different item routers which are actually kind of hidden um, or liquid routers rather uh, tied to the whole smeltery system to automatically pull molten ore in and out of the system allowing you to keep all the stuff on hand and it kind of looks cool especially if you have it all set up in the lab hopefully that helped explain how to use smeltery controllers how to make a couple different alloys one thing I, I did forget to mention is that you can actually make alloys from other mods for example the thermal expansion mod has an alloy for electrum ingots those can actually be made 
um, right in the smeltery, which is cool. You can store liquid electrum on hand. You can see that actually back there behind me. And that's actually really cool um, to, to be able to keep that stuff on hand and then just crank it out into ingots or blocks or, or whatever you need at any given point in time. Make sure to check us out at themindcrafters.com. That's M-I-N-D crafters.com. And there are tutorials, a link to a mod spotlight on this, a couple other tutorials for Tinker's Constructs, a couple articles, uh, where to download this mod, how to update it, all that stuff, all that jazz is actually going to be on our website, themindcrafters.com. Make sure to check there. Make sure to check our new live map that we have. You can watch us play our server live as we're going around. That's themindcrafters.com slash map. Join us all the time for free and 24-7 web chat at theminecrafters.com slash IRC. And, of course, we live stream every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All that other stuff is all on the website. I won't waste your time. Guys, as always, thanks for watching, and stay poised.